Right, it's 4 p.m. Are we ready, ready to go, Matt? It's 4 p.m. Can I please ask everyone to mute their microphones? Officers and guests, could you also turn off your cameras? You should turn on your camera and microphone when you speak, but please turn them back off after again afterward. All councillors must ensure that their cameras remain on. Could I please ask Democratic Services to begin the recording? Pnawn ddau pawb, troisoir cyfarfod heddiw. Good afternoon, welcome to the Neighbourhood Services Countryside and Planning Scrutiny Committee on Monday the 26th of September 2022. Please note that this meeting, meeting is being recorded and may be broadcast via the authorities' internet site. The images and sound recording may also be used for training purposes within the authority. Thank you. Just like to thank everyone for attending today. Um, first item on the agenda is apologies for absence. Do we have apologies for absence? Councillor Jeremy Davis. Thank you. Do we have any declarations of interest? None. Then move on to items, agenda item three, our forward work programme. This is a new forward work programme, and you can see that it has changed slightly to considered issues that needed to be dealt with as a priority. As we have said all along, this is a fluid document that is led by the scrutiny committee, but we are able to rearrange things, rearrange items to suit the requirements at the time. Whilst we always try to deal with, we will always try to deal with the right issue in the right way at the right time in the right place by adding value through critical friend challenge and ensuring a robust work programme is in place. Thank you. Uh, are there any comments with regard the forward work programme? Um, on to item four then. Scrutiny referrals. We have no scrutiny referrals. We move on to item five. Which is the acceptance of trade waste at the household Re waste and recycling centers in Dowless. The summary of the report is to consider trialing acceptance of recyclable materials from trade premises within the county borough at the Dowless HWRC that are cost neutral or provide an income for the council. This will be monitored, monitored under a permit scheme in order to increase our recycling performance and reduce flight tipping. The, the recommendation is to consider and discuss the report to allow scrutiny to ex examine the potential policy changes relating to the acceptance of trade waste at the HWRCs by providing a critical friend challenge to the policy makers and decision makers. And I open it up now to the committee. Chair, the, the officers are going to make some any comments, or I'll be just into questions. Okay, to start talking. Yep. Um, well, as Dave read out the summary of the report and recommendation, um, a few things I want to highlight. Uh, as you as you have read the report, um, if you have a look, if we can look at um, where we were, um, the system implemented in two thousand eight did not allow traders uh, traders to use the HRS WRCs. Um, a disclaimer scheme was implemented but was rarely used and, and deterred trade access along with permit system. Disclaimer was was meant means of asking the site users who were suspected of dis dispositing 
business with to confirm that they were not traders. Um, 4.3, the permit did not allow vehicles over 3.5 ton uh, to be used by residents. These are not accepted at the site. They're still not uh, accepted because of health and safety reasons. Uh, residents could be allowed only six permits per rolling year and have three permits under one application. A permit, the permit had to be used within seven days of the application, and this would limit the traders' use of six trips per year if the traders were u- utilising the site as householders. Um, if we look at where we are now, in 2019, to improve the application process and have more control over trade use, it was decided to provide an online service to permit distribute distribution and it this allowed us to check promptly how many permits have been issued per registration and for what material categories in 2018 the council took back control of the hr hwrc's from the private sector and managed and operate them in house this allowed the waste services department to start using disclaimer system to deter traders from using the HR, the HWRCs. Um, in 2020, due to GDPR legislation and COVID outbreak, this was decided by the waste services team that the disclaimer system would no longer be used until further notice. This was down to retaining personal information and face-to-face contact that would be needed to fill out the disclaimer forms. As you can see, you can see the uh, tonnage in comparison in the table shown in 5.41. Um, as you can see that the, the graph shows, apart from car, tonnage increased year on year and the metals decreasing each year. Most metal and material tonnages have remained st- static. Um, where we want to be is to improve the amount of recycling material collected at the HWRCs to increase the authority's overall recovery rate and to help towards re- achieving Welsh Government's recovery target of 64% currently, rising to 70% in 2024-25, provision for that for an outlet for traders to legally deposit uh, deposit some of the waste material may positively impact on flight tipping within the county borough. To achieve the above, we propose to allow access into Dowless HWRCs for business that will operate within the county borough for income and the cost neutral recycling materials only. Below is the list of or if you can see on the next page is the list of material that we are we accepting under this proposal. This list is not exhaustive and may be subject to additional addition. If a further stream become neutral or bring or brings in new uh, brings in income. As you can see the, there's a list of what can be uh, recycled at the center uh, for trade. Um, the traders who currently do not have curbside traders contract in place with Mercer Council will have to pay annual fee every financial year to cover the worst transfer note. The documentation and registration costs to utilise the dollars HWRC fee free of charge to be deposit recycling. A current charge for the WT uh, work uh, transferred uh, note, which will be invoiced by the local authorities' trade waste officer. The WTN will list all the materials that can be deposited in Dowler's uh, recycling centre for the financial year. The customer will need reg- to register with the council waste services department. This can be done by phone or by call or by or by email. When attending Dowler's HWRC, customers must present suitable identification from the from the place of business along with the WTN 
to access the site and to deposit materials. As you can see, there's another two, three points under there. Uh, what we want to do next then, based on the information gathered, we are seeking to deduce the changes below to incre increase our recycling performance and reduce fly tipping. The recommendation overall over, during the trial period is to allow access of traders for the above material stream at the Dowless site only. Throughout the summer and winter opening hours, we consider restricting the hours and days, but for congestion and health and safety reasons, we decided best to allow access on the full opening times of the Dowless site. This may change during the trial period depending on the impact of the operation. We are asking that the trial runs for a minimum of 12 months for the data and reporting purpose, purposes. We are seeking approval for this trial up till March 31st, 2024. This will give us enough time to produce an accurate financial tonnage report. If successful, we want to make this a permanent function. Um, the reasons we want to do this is, is obviously, I think the reason why we want to do this is to reduce the, the complaints that we have, because we have quite a lot of complaints up in the centre. Try to prevent and limit flight tipping occurrences in the county borough. Increase our overall recycling tonnage at the HWRC to keep up with the strict targets set out by the Welsh Government and to implement a bespoke system to cater for the needs of our residents and businesses. Okay, I ask for questions, Chair. Thank you, David. Paul, do you want to add anything to that? Paul Davis. But uh, the only reason we're trying to do it is obviously that we got the, the new figures uh, for recovery rates coming in uh, year on year, we're trying to get to the 70% and uh, hopefully this will help us bring more recycling in um, so that we can, we can reach the 70% and not be fined by Welsh Government. Move on then to questions and the first one is Councillor Bill Smith, please. Thank you, Chair. I've read the report and I'm, I'm supported, but can we have a review every either six six months time to find out where we're going? Because a lot of things can happen in Europe. And the, the re, why, why am I asking for the review in six months time? Perhaps we can improve it and change certain things. You know, because you got um, no little skips, uh, flat beds and something like that. Didn't I? Right? Perhaps we can use them on certain times of the day because. Uh, the ore they bring up on the rubbish material is, is worth money in it. Can be crushed down. So that's a massive for and support full support report. But I want to review six months time. I was to go in, it's a failure, and I'll be take it forward. Yeah, it's fine. We can bring a um an information report back to Sutton if you want to in, in the six months rather than the twelve months. The only reason we put down uh, to start it on March the thirty first, two thousand and twenty three in the report is Obviously, we were told it'd have to go through scrutiny, then it might have to go through full council, then it'd have to go, uh, sorry, to cabinet, then to full council. So we, we just give ourselves a bit of time to, to make sure everything was done before we did it. We can start this trial earlier than, than March, if need be, uh, and then we can review it every three months and give and, and give you information reports whenever you want yeah, to. I, can I say, I don't want information reports, I want a report. Because the rules are information reports, we can't answer, answer any questions. Uh, so, you know, we want something where we can bite into and find out. Yeah, no problem. Uh, uh, yeah. Again? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think I said in the report that we will be changing, we might change uh, from what the report says. So any good ideas like that will, will be uh, brought up enough, a good idea if we have them uh, in interim report. Yeah. Right, so the, the request is that we get information reports uh, reports about the information every three months for the duration of the trial. Is that correct? Yeah. Well, is that the officer of your mind fit in or? It's a bit hard, but you know. No, it's fine. Just what sort of reports you're looking for as well? 
Well, us going in, any issues, any problems? Okay. So no you want to problem problems, any problems from the traders? Yeah. All that type of uh, that's that's information. What that's the data information that we want to be taking right. forward. Okay, so nothing like financial or data or kind of. No, that we come back to the the director. Okay, I'd just I suggest that probably six monthly reports would give more information. Three months might not give much if that's acceptable. Yeah, because yeah, all we're looking at is to see current um, figures and the figures in six months time about with regard to waste and possibly the recycling. Councillor Council Clive Jones. Yes, thank you, Chair. Um, and uh, I agree with Councillor Smith that um, we should um, agree to this uh, trial. Um, what I couldn't find in here is is just been referred to by the actual start date, because my view is that perhaps the sooner we start this, the better. I see no reasons uh, really why we can't start this um asap um and i agree that uh, we should be having reports uh, every six months to see the issues and whether it's running smoothly but can i ask a cabinet member um do you uh, what what's the anticipation of the percentage of uh, an increase in recycling because surely there must have been some research carried out to this. Uh, we've got to reach that target figure in 18 months time, starting on the 1st of April 2024. So we're at 64% at the moment. Um, that is a really, in my view, a, a big ask to get up to 70%. So what, what research has been undertaken and what do you think that um, the increase is likely to be because as well as this, we have to increase our recycling with the domestic users as well. Well, well, as you can see, the, what we ask in the trade uh, people to uh, the material stream that we ask them to recycle are all recyclable uh, materials and they will, they are up to 97%, 200% is all recyclable. So that this should have a big impact on the figures. Obviously, as you said, uh, Councillor Jones said that the the figure will only be reached if we get our residents to recycle better, which I would agree with you there. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't know, um, perhaps others do, of the how many are likely to be using uh, this site, but I would have thought um that uh, it could be quite a few do we do have we any idea the numbers are likely to well i think if it goes on among the complaints we have by trade as you go up there and turn the way yeah i think it'll be quite a few as you said and uh speaking to people in the trade they are saying that they've been waiting for this to happen for years so right. it will happen just one other question chair because it says in the report that they they need to have um, if there's a variety of recyclers there, they need to have sorted that out before they yeah. they get there. Um, we got enough trouble with our domestic users doing that at the moment. So do we anticipate any problems with the, the traders in sorting this out before they they get to the civic community site? I think that's a reason why we opened it up for the whole day. Right. Where we were going to do it only two hours or yeah. three hours on a certain day. Right. We opened up to every day so that traders can come in the day. Can they, uh, yeah. A lot of our uh, yeah. residents come after work. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Philip Starr. And I'd like to agree with uh, my colleagues that uh, fully support the. Uh, the proposals in this report. My question is quite a simple one. How will the proposed changes, if they're accepted, be publicised and advertised to the people that it will affect? 
first of all, we're going to um, probably advertise it. Well, not probably, we will be advertising it to all our customers. Um, just to go back on, I'll, I'll come back to your question in a second, just to, to answer a little bit more on Clive's uh, question, Councillor Jones. We're on 66% provisionally for this year, so we're looking to get three and a half, three and three point six percent out of this. Obviously, with um, with opening this up to trade, we are going to lose customers on the curbside that we already service. Because if, um, for instance, somebody's got a small shop or uh, a small pub, they might want to take their own material free of charge down to the SWRC rather than pay us to to pick it up from. We don't know. That's why it's sort of it's fingering at the moment, hoping that we're going to get at least three percent out of it. But it's very hard to quantify what we are going to get out of it. Obviously, because we could lose some on the curbside, we we'll take it down to the site, which the tonnage we would have had anyway, because we would have picked it up ourselves. Obviously, not only from a, a waste point of view. This is for the old authority. If we are uh, not picking up so much, then obviously our carbon footprint is going to go down as well because we're not some, using our vehicles so much. You know, there could be a case that in five, six years' time that we wouldn't need uh, a recycling vehicle to pick up trade waste. They could all bring it to the sites themselves. You know, this is a long-term plan. It's not a plan that we're thinking of and trialling for short-term. It's something that we are trying to look around everything with the carbon, you know, trying to get our carbon footprint down, trying to get save money for the authority by getting rid of a vehicle, uh, losing the fuel of the vehicle, on cost of the vehicle. It's, it's everything. But, like, going back to... to Phil's, Phil's question. We are going to tell our customers first because obviously they've already got the waste transfer note uh, in place, so they can use it from day one. If it's for somebody else, such as if I own the pub and I haven't got a contract with Merthyr Council on my waste transfer note, then I'd have to apply to Lisa, not apply, just write to Lisa, email, phone her, ask her for uh, how they get a waste transfer note. It's forty pounds for the year. They pay the forty pounds for the year. They covered legally then to carry waste to our site which means that they can come in the following day as long as they produce that uh, waste carrier's note, which is a, a carbon copy uh, on the site, then they, they're allowed to use the site. That's great. Thanks, Paul. Uh, Councillor Malcolm Colbran. Yeah, thank you, Chair. Yeah, like everyone else, I am fully support this. Um, I think it's long overdue. Um, in the past, I have had trade waste myself, and I certainly would have welcomed the opportunity to take it to the... Um, to the Dowler site rather than having to pay to get it taken away separately. So I, I think it's a great idea. Um, at the moment, we're just down ice. If the trial is successful, are we planning to uh, increase, move it to have a van as well? No, I see a shake of the head there. So it's just going to be doubtless, is it? Um, the problem we got is is the size of the sites. Um, you know, it, there's lots of things we'd like to add to the Dowler site, add to the Abavan site, but the site is so compact at the moment for health and safety purposes. I don't think there's going to be enough room to allow traders on uh, Abavan. We look at it again in future to see, you know, once we get some baseline data that we can look at how many using that um, Dowler site and we think, well, there's that many. Can we cope with that with two men down on, on Abavan? Then we can look at that further on. So maybe that's something that um, we can bring up in, like I say, when we come back to scrutiny in six months, and we say to you, yeah, this is the amount of vehicles that used it. This is the amount of tonnages we've had in and the amount of percent we've had out there. Then maybe we can look at it down the valley. But at the moment, due to size, we can only manage it up in dollars. Right, thank you. Councillor Clive Jones. Yeah, Chair, sorry. I wanted to clarify something. I think you might have answered it. Um, it's it, You mentioned a charge of £40. Pounds. Um, how, how off? So this introduction is it completely will be at the trial free to all traders? It's going to be forty pound to all traders. For every for, for, sorry for how long? Uh, That's a yearly. It's forty ah, pound per year. At right. the moment, every whatever whatever any person who's carrying waste from their property from a commercial property as is supposed to by law have this waste transfer note yeah you're not supposed to carry waste otherwise yeah obviously there's people that that, that do and, and get around it but every person who is a customer of Merthyr council at the moment has this waste transfer note they issue to it yearly right anybody coming on new will have to take out the waste transfer note to be able to carry their waste to the site legally to right us. right okay thank you paul answers Councillor Bill Smith, please. 
Thank you. Paul, are we charging the same price as RCT? Because I didn't know till this week that they were taking uh, waste generally to the, the Big Peter site. I don't know, but if, if they accept in waste at RCT, mm. there will be a minimum of forty pound charge. It will be the same same price it all. Be a the... minimum of forty pound charge for right. waste transfer, not before right. you pay per ton. Right. Oh, I didn't know it was the guy next door was yeah. taken. Oh, I thought it'd be perhaps we could work at RCT and find out how the data is of shaping about and yeah. we'll come in. Yeah. Do we have any further questions? Open the floor up to comments then, please. Councillor Clive Jones. Thank you, Chair. Well, I, first of all, I'm pleased to hear that we're on, hopefully on target for a 66% um, uh, collection rate this year. Um, I think you said that ho hopefully this may add, is it 3.6% um, onto that as well? Um, that's got to be um, a good thing. And I hopefully there'll be no uh, issues or real issues. There's bound to be uh, certain things that will crop up that have um, got to be dealt with. But uh, I think this is a, a move forward to um, get our target and keep it over the, the 70 percent uh, chair. So I welcome the uh, report and the suggestions in it. Councillor Paula Leighton. Hey, I just wanted to mirror what um, Councillor Jones was saying, that I fully support the recommendations. I think it's great. I mean, we're looking at helping the residents. The fly tipping will reduce, hopefully, and we'll hopefully improve our targets. So, yes, yeah, a win-win. Fully support it. Are there any final comments? Oh, sorry, Councillor Bill Smith. No, oh, we're quite happy to move the recommendation. Let's go on and this as well. Oh, I saw the question. I said, when are we going to start this? Because if we can start it earlier, I'd be pleased with it. Yeah. Right. Is the process now? Do, um, I'm not quite sure. I have to ask Judith. Do, do I need? Is it need to be a policy change within? Um... Yeah. Given that it's a change to policy, we will need council approval for this. But um, we can take the report forward to one of the forthcoming council meetings. And subject to approval of that, we can start it. Yeah, yeah including six months. Yeah, yeah including the six months start to the six months meeting, is it right? Yeah. Because once you know the start date, it's six months from the I, start date. I just want to make sure that no. we all agree. Yeah. Sorry. Just be discussed, and we we agree with the, the recommendations in the report, um, but add that a six monthly report come back to this scrutiny. Where is the time they start? Yeah. Move on then to agenda item six. And David, I won't steal your thunder this time. I don't have thunder, but there you go. Household Waste Recycling Centre van permit. To consider the potential changes to the van permit system below, to improve the efficiency of the current system. And the recommendations are to consider and discuss the report to allow scrutiny to examine the potential policy changes relating to van permit system at the HWRCs by providing a critical friend challenge to the policy makers and decision makers. Um, once the report, I want to take it to um, at the moment, only household waste can be deposited at the HWRCs, trade waste and construction and de demolition waste cannot currently accept this at the sites. This is a policy requirement uh, as a, the sites are permitted to accept trade waste. The, the bespoke permits for both sites are implemented in September 2018 when the council brought the sites in house. The permit also allows an increase in tonnage capacity 
per annum to a maximum of 15.00 tonnes per site. The, the qualities of trade waste that it was deposited at the site was put in the financial strain on authority. Uh, where we were, the system implemented in 2008 allowed residents of the county borough who wished to deposit waste recycling at the sites using a van or trailer to to apply for a free of charge permit. Permits could be obtained from the civic centre and other council build, buildings such as leisure centre and libraries. The permit did not allow vehicles over 3.5 tonnes to use to be used by residents, and these will still not be accepted. Um, the residents could be allocated six permits per rolling year and have up to three permits under one application. Permits have to, have to, have to be used within seven days of the application. So if we look where we are now, in 2019, to improve the application process, and have more control over distribution of permits, a, rec a record of types of waste taken to the site, it was decided to provide an online service to allow residents that did not have access to online system paper permits that are available at the civil centre. COVID restriction resulted in the closure of the civic, civic centre, and from March 2020 and to date, have made that option unavailable. The Civic Centre is now open under restricted hours to the public, so paper copies are available. The restriction on certain types of vans, such as long wheelbase vehicles, as well as double axle trailers, was fitted, lifted in 2019 to allow these vehicles to use the site under the permit scheme. Um, the list uh, below, I'd like to say systems of other authorities across Wales have in operations for comparison. Of the 22 Welsh authorities, 19 have a van permit scheme in place. Mercer Tidville are one of these authorities. 18 of these authorities require permits for vans and trailers and pickups. One authority required permits for commercial vehicles. Mercy Tidville County Borough Council are one of the, these vehicle, one of these 18 authorities. Uh, for the distribution of four authorities, uh, for permits, four authorities did this online. Five by post, three at the civic buildings and three at the HWRCs. In some cases, there was a combination of these practices. Mercer County Borough Council provided permits online and at the Civic Centre. Vehicles are not accepted at the HRWRC for, for nine authorities are box vans, long wheelbase vehicles, vehicles over 3.5 ton, flatbed lorries. Five authorities do not accept sign written or commercial registered vehicles. Mercy to the County by the Council are one of the nine authorities that that with the above restrictions. No no authority except trade waste except for one, which there is a charge for the service. Four authorities, a maximum amount of ten or less permits of household per year. Five authorities allows between eleven and twenty permits per household per year. One authority allows 75 permits per household per year, and one authority allows up to 150 permits per household per year. One authority has no maximum cap on permits allocation. Mercer, Tidwell County Borough Council are in the minority of the four authorities providing fewer than 10 permits per year. The waste service are currently working with the service support department identified a solution to cancelling unused permits to request so that the applicant, applicant does not lose or unuse allocated permits. Right, if we, if we look at what we need to do next, based on the information gathered, we are seeking to introduce the changes below to improve the van permit system. When, it, when the electronic permit has been applied for, 
then this can be used at any time and not restricted to the seven days as was before. Remove the limited of six permits per rolling year to an unlimited amount. Remove the requirement for minibuses and MPVs to have permits to use the sites. However, those vehicles that take out the seats in the minibus, we class that as a van, so they won't be able to use it. And same goes with MPV. If they take all the seats out, it is then a van, so we won't be looking at that. Uh, waste Services Department contributes to the Council's environmental well-being objectives in EW1 community detective tech, and enhance to promote our environment and countryside. Okay, why are we doing it, you might ask? To reduce the compl complaints, to prevent and limit fly tipping occurrence within the county borough, increase our overall recycling tonnage at the HWRC to keep up with the strict, strict target by the Welsh Government, and to implement a bespoke system to cater the needs of the residents. I finish that. Paul, do you want to add anything that is an introduction? Paul, Christian? Yeah, it's just basically like we just want to keep up with the demand for the public. So we we realize that six permits a year sometimes is not enough. Um, obviously, we need the recycling as well. So it, it, it just justifies why we need to do it, really. Thanks for that. Um, on to questions now then, and Councillor Clive Jones. Uh, thank you, Chair. On page 26, uh, paragraph 6.2, uh, it says the proposal is to remove minibuses and MPVs. I presume that's multi-purpose vehicles, is that correct? Could you describe to me um, a multi-purpose vehicle? I think I know what you mean. But um, I presume they'll be of the same size as a, I don't know, a 16-seater minibus. Is, is that correct or wrong? No, I think what we, we're thinking of is the, the seven-seaters, you know, the, the um, um, Ford Space or whatever they are. They, right. A lot of households now, obviously, with, with bigger families, have got these bigger cars. And um, what we've been doing is, is making them have, trans, um, have permits to come to the site. Uh, obviously, is some people that's their only vehicle that that they use day in day out. Um, transporters such as the you know the ones that, a lot of people are, are converting these transporters now for, for multi-purpose vehicles to use as camping and things like that. So yeah. is you know that's their only vehicle. Well, in the past it's been that they've had to apply for a permit to come on the site. We we want to scrap that. So if that is their only vehicle and they're using the ASWRCs with seats still in it then we'll class it as the only car and, and class it as a car so they wouldn't have to get a permit. Right. I've, I've got, there's one of those in, in my family and um, I know they've been up to the site and I think they were, I think they were turned away because it was that type mm. of vehicle. So I have no doubt you've had complaints, but not everybody knows that you can't currently use that type of vehicle going into the site. Yeah. Um, so I would have thought your um, your complaints when this is well known and advertised to the public, um, that as you say, uh, your complaints should should come down with a with a sharp wallop, I would have thought. Councillor Paula Leighton. Oh, yeah, thanks, Chair. I just wanted to ask, is this at both sites, though, this one? Yeah, that's at both sites now. This oh, is for, new, it's for like, the old permit scheme for, for the uh, for waste management. Ah, oh, lovely. Thank you. Councillor Bill Smith. Yeah, it's the same question. And like I you asked, but when is it going to start and can we start earlier like we did with, uh, with the uh, trade waste? 
I don't think this is a policy. Would it be a policy change again? So I think it'd have to go through the cabinet and then obviously we can do it straight away. On, so are we, we're ready to, to, to start it. Yeah, we're going to get it to the public and we show it now. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, the leaflet will need changing as well as, as the policy, yeah. the internal policy. So that'll need changing, need to be translated, we need to publicise it. There is things that need to be done, but it doesn't take a great deal of time. So yeah, we can yeah. start it as soon it's as we are. Well, really is. Yeah. Mr. Philip Starr. Yeah, Chair, my question is related to the timing and to the publicity. So th those queries have been answered. Thank you. Councillor Leighton, did you have a qu another question? Sorry, there was a hand, or was it a legacy hand? No, it's gone. Sorry, it was a legacy hand. Okay. Councillor Clive Jones. So, so it begs the obvious question. Um, this small alterations that have to be done. Um, do we know, have we got any idea when could this start? Because it seems to me that particularly this, could be started with um, the right publicity, uh, could be started with a sh very uh, short period of time. Next council. Well, can, yeah, can anybody tell us? Yeah, we can take the report in November, council. PM. Right, that's, that's good enough for me. Um, and obviously, as a result of that, then you'll have to publicise it. But I presume that people will be given a date as to when this is starting. We look to start this straight away. Once yeah. we're, once it's passed in council, we'll be looking to start it ASAP. Thank you, Chair. Do we have any further questions? Move on then to comments, please. Uh, Councillor Malcolm Colburn. Yeah, thank you, Chair. Yeah, and another report I fully agree with. I think this is a really positive step and it'd be a great benefit to all our residents. And again, can't wait for it to start sooner the better. Thank you. Councillor Clive Jones. Thank you, Chair. Um, I, I agree with Councillor Colburn um, and I welcome this report. And I think the important uh, words are in two paragraphs here, six to uh, halfway down. It says this may also reduce fly tipping of building materials such as plasterboard and rubble, which in effect will reduce cleanup costs. My guess is this will definitely reduce fly tipping of building materials because we've all seen it. Uh, fly tipping hotspots throughout the country, but uh, apart from their usual black bags and so on, there you'll find a certain amount of building materials. That's been going on um by for years and also by uh, further down in the 64 by removing and granting unlimited van permits per household this will increase recycling and reduce fly tipping i have no doubt at all that's what will happen thank you chair councillor bill smith no chair the same and my colleagues there is supported has gone on with it because I've had enough complaints about six uh, permits a year, every month in Arabia sometimes. So it's going to do a job and make sure we do it right for the two areas. Are there any further comments? I think that's had a reasonable airing, so I assume that we're happy to go with the recommendations in the report, yeah? Thank you very much. Yes. Uh, thank you, Paul and Christian. You can stay for the rest of the meeting if you wish, or you can leave. Thank you very much for your time today. That brings us on to agenda item seven. And again, over to you, David. Thank you, Chair. Um, children play areas and that hyphen 
playgrounds. The play is essential ingredient for healthy growth and development of children. It keeps children healthy and active, develops social skills and confidence, helps children to deal with stress and many may reduce crime and vandalism. Play provision fosters a sense of community and can improve social inclusion. In 2021, an independent report highlighting the sites which were in need of replacement or removal. Many of the council's fixed play areas are in need of refurbishment, with some of them reaching end of lifespan. The council has recognised the need to refurbish these sites and allocated capital money for the refurbishment of the programme. This program has already started with the four sites being completed in 2021 and 2022. And work on the next tranche of refurbishment is currently under being undertaken. I the recommendation that scrutiny committee challenge the progress made of the delivery of the playground development plan and provide recommendations for consideration prior to the next stage of the plan being presented to Cabinet. Um, playground provision is a non statutory service and as such is often seen as a low priority, especially when local authorities have to make difficult choices on where to spend the available funds. The Council has currently 53 fixed play areas throughout the county borough. Many of these facilities are coming to the end of their useful life and indeed refurbishment. The Council recognised the importance of play for the health and well-being of children and young people and for physical and social and mental and emotional aspects of life. In 2021, as part of the Council annual inspection of play facilities at the end of life, estimation report was, was also provided. This highlights the scale of the problem ahead and can be seen in Appendix 1. Following this report, Cabinet requested that the structural plan be prepared to refurbish playgrounds across the county borough. In 2021, the Council set aside capital provisions to allow a refurbishment programme to commence. Where we were in the early 90s, we had 68 local equipped areas for play. Many sites were stocked with equipment from the 1960s and most were due for refurbishment or removal. The overall numbers of improving the ones that remain, the eventual number was reduced to around 55 sites having removed 23 sites from the original list, with some new sites added too. The remaining sites were refurbished over the following years at a cost of £1.2 million. Funding of the programme came from a number of sources, 820000 from Accelerated Capital Programme, with the remaining money coming from the grants and the developer contribution to urban programme money. However, since 2003, Welsh Assembly grant money, as well as community-led grant funding for approximately 928,000 has been spent on full or partial refurbishment. In 2021, the Council set aside capital provision of 2000 and 280,000 each year over five years to start the programme of playground refurbishment. In 2021 22, the first four sites were completed, completely refurbished. These were Kevin Coyd, Glantaff Road, Abavan, I think that's Trodru, I believe, uh, Glantaff Road, Trodru, Tunkame, Lewis Street, Ben Linog. These being well received and scrutiny members have requested a site visit to see themselves for themselves the result of the renewals as well as reviewing some of the sites that need re replacement. So where we are now, following the review of the properties of the council capital programme, the capital allocation for this project 
was increased from the two thousand two hundred and eighty thousand pound per annum to five hundred and twelve thousand per annum. This will allow more sites to be completed within a shorter time. To provide a standard local equipped area, that's a leap. It is estimated that each site would cost around seventy two hundred thousand. Right. Uh, due to the total value of the works, the next tranche of refurbishment, refurbishment will be procured differently. This will either be open an open tender or by council setting up their own purchasing framework, which would include all of the main playground equip, equipment suppliers to install. Um, what I like to say is that not only is that the, the capital money of nearly two and a half million pounds over five years will be used, any sale money will also be used if we can afford to put it there so we can increase the number of um, part, uh, leaps that can be done. Um, and also uh, what we want to do is talk to the local council councillors uh, from each ward where the, the the new sites are being done for the uh, the input as well as for any other consultation. Um, where we want to be to implement a continuous refurbishment program to ensure a future of place throughout the county borough is assured. A aim would be to provide safe and well designed playgrounds that are accessible to all, regardless of physical ability. This would require an assessment of each site under the Equality Act in 2010. To establish a clear system to provide system to procedures of the procurement and disposal play equipment, including the need to consult with the local community on the needs and concerns, both of adults and children. What we need to do next is consult with the elected members to see future priorities, re-evaluate the current level of provision based on census information and an analysis of the areas of local co population growth caused by housing developments. Consultation with public will be an important step. Sites will be which are supported and accepted in the community are better used than them and set, suffer from less vandalism. We want to develop a phase rollout of program appropriately prioritizing over a reasonable time scale. Identification of these sites will need to be immediately total refurbishment and those that require partial refurbishment to bring them up to the required standard to identify the capital investment and require an, en an enable a 15 year replacement program and decide to allocate, allocate capital funding on a regular basis and to work with the communities themselves, grant applications, asset transfers, the local RSLs also have got a lot of lot to play in its uh, this policy. So I just uh, open it up now. Uh, yes, thanks. Thank you, David. Uh, before I take it into questions, I just something I'd like to say before the before we vote. It was intended to carry out site visits uh, along most, if not all, of the sites, but uh, it wasn't possible to arrange those. But we will now, those site visits will still take place and we'll report back through this committee. Um, opening up to questions now with Councillor Clyde Jones. Thank you, Chair. Um, bear with me, I've got a few questions, but the, there's two I'd like to clear up um, straight away. On page 30, under paragraph 3.2, uh, says the council currently manages 53 fixed play areas throughout the county borough, but on appendix um, one, it lists 51. So can someone explain to me the discrepancy there? Um, and also, can I ask my second question? Um, the figure in here 
uh, in the report says it, it's been estimated that each site would have a cost of around 70,000 to 100,000. Uh, the figure that um, I had in, in writing um, this year, earlier this year, was approximately 70,000. So could someone tell me the reasons why um, it's there's another 30,000 been added to that figure? Yeah. Uh, obviously, I know materials have increased, but there might be other reasons. But I've got other questions, Chair, after that. Thanks. Yeah, it's, it's as you said, the uh, uh, material has been increased. Uh, also, labour has increased, as you as you know, uh, to get a job done now, we cost you a lot more than what it did last year, even. So that's why the estimate of 70, 200,000 have been put in. Right. Obviously, the the equipment then that um, you, you go to from a particular contractor, that, by the sound of it, has vastly increased to what it was before. Okay. And could some explain to me why it's mentioned 53 in the report? And there's 51 sites on the appendix. Yeah, I think we do manage a couple for Mill Valley Homes as well, and there's one for the um, uh, the Leisure Trust. Ah, right. Okay. Um, I, I, Chair, I, I've read the appendix one with uh, interest because it details there um, the problems with uh, several of these playgrounds, and of that 51 there, it's, uh, I made a note, 10 are listed as generally good. Um, four are leisure trust. One is community council. And the uh, there's a suggestion in here, I think, I think there's more than one, where there's a possible um, Trusted transfer to M Merthyr Valley Homes. I think um, I think there's two in there. One up in Gatley Dig is a possible Merthyr Valley Homes funding. Um, so the reason I've um, referred to that is when it says, for example, generally good. I presume from that, Chair, that um, they would be less left until the last of whatever remains to be done. Um, so I've, unless I'm wrong, somebody can correct me. Um, if it's 53 sites, we did four last year. We've done doing five this year. Am I right in saying that it's 42 sites that we will be looking at? Um, and of the ones I've listed, the Ledger Trust um, do we own the sites or is it the Leisure Trust would be entirely responsible for carrying out uh, refurbishment um, of those? The I think the one you, you're talking about is the Gekli Dig uh, with potential um, with Valley Homes funding. Now that was on our, on our priority list. Um, however, because there was some potential for um funding externally we took that off our priority list it's still a priority to be done so those negotiations are ongoing and if that funding becomes available then obviously the council won't pay for that uh, it could either be taken into um the Merth valley homes or it could be still maintained by the council but funded by the uh the rsl right and the the uh, the ledger trust do they do we own the site or is it owned by the ledger trust the the ledger trust uh, such as my road um i wouldn't say own but they are they they are leased to the ledger trust and we have some responsibility for the maintenance we we charge the the trust for the maintenance that we carry out so essentially it is owned by the ledger trust yes right so if there's through your chair if there's any equipment that need replacing or vandalised, it's for the trust to uh, pay for that. Yes, I suppose it is, yes. And that's the same with the community council? 
the one owned by the community council. The the kickabout area, uh, yes, the same would go for that, I would imagine. So I worked out from that. If you take all those and the 10 that are regarded as generally good, that leaves us with some of the region of about 24, 25 ish to be looked at. I mean, is that is that about the right figure? Yeah, that's correct. But uh, as you pointed out earlier on, the generally good ones are generally good at the moment. They're not, um, you know, they're generally good for the next couple of years. In other words, they're not an health and safety risk at the moment, whereas the priority ones would need to be refurbished immediately. The generally good ones are the secondary on the list, if you like. They still need refurbishment, but at the moment, they are generally good and safe to be used. Not that the others are unsafe, but um, they are sort of second priority then. Right. So let's stick with this figure, say around about 25. Um, how many are planned to be then? And are we doing five currently this year? Um, is that the same number that's due to be planned next year, or, or are we likely to increase that figure? It's all caught. And if if like the the housing development where they be wanting to do um a new we'd be uh, encouraging them to put in a park with the new housing uh developers. And uh, if we get any grant money, well obviously we, we do more, you know, but currently we're looking at five a year at the moment, okay? Right. And procurement chair I read in the report. That um, I think we are adopting a, is it a new system of procurement within the authority? I don't I don't know what the current system is of procurement, but I presume that this altered system is hopefully going to save us some money. Yeah, the the original four that we refurbished uh, because they were seventy thousand pound, we could go out for three quotations which was a much faster process. We didn't have to go through a formal tender uh, because of the value of this, because of the capital uh, outlay has gone up to £512,000 a year. And if you aggregate that, that's a substantial amount of money. We can no longer do that via the courts. So we have to go out in a formal tender by e-tender Wales or um, you know, contacting the companies and sending them the documentation, et cetera. Or we could, and I've spoken to Brookham on this, we could set up our own framework so we invite all the the playground suppliers to um, input their costs into the into the framework, and as the rolling program was on, we pick then the suppliers off the framework. Right. So that's that's the two options at the moment. Um, which is the best option, and which will save us money, is debatable at the moment. But we are having meetings with procurement. Right. And one one last question, Chair. You've listed a few in here where there's been so much vandalism um, and inappropriate sites that they should be removed um it, for the ones in here that you've listed as to be removed we, will some of those not be replaced at all i know you others you talked about perhaps looking at another um, you know more appropriate sites um less vandalism etc so of that list they may the, the number we've got to do may come down because you've taken off, I don't know, one or two of them have been removed permanently and not replaced. Yeah, that, that would be my recommendation. Sites like Glan, uh, not Glan, that road, um, St. John's Grove in Pendaran, heavily vandalised, no matter how many times we repaired yeah. it, uh, the, the wet post safety servicing have been burnt. Uh, equipment is damaged so my recommendation would be that's not a very good site it's enclosed it's not overlooked by um uh, residents so in my opinion that should be removed um okay. whether we can get a, a another site and that, that would be down to negotiation with uh, local ward members etc but my recommendation on that site uh, and there are a few others uh, would be to remove because of the the vandalism you know and it's costing the authority a lot of money yeah thank you chair Thank you, Clive. Councillor Bill Smith. Thank you, Chair. An easy question at first. Well, Cherry Grove playing area, is that, do that belong to us or Merth Valley Homes? Valley Homes. It is, it's, that's Merth Valley Homes. Yes. Right, great. 
the chair mentioned earlier on, we want to look around all the sites, have a site meeting for everything to see where we go in and what, and what the state of play more or less in it. Because I've seen some of your comments on yeah, how can we speak to my ward? Because you want to move the one by Goitra Lane in between. And I think that's well used. But I like to, as the chair said, go around, have a look, come back. Because we're going to talk every day about playgrounds, yeah? And different wars, different issues. But I, I like to go around, as the chair knows my feelings, have a look at them, come back and have further discussions. Because we won't have the money for this. And if it's talking 70 grand next year, the year after next, it'll be 90 grand and it costs a living. So now we've got to be careful what we do and re and re look at it, where we get the funding, because you don't know, you can't guarantee it we can build five and you would have the money there. So but the, the money's put into the MDFP. Yeah. It's yeah, already allocated in the yeah, capital you, program for the next five years. Yeah, but you've got a cost of living and that's the blue. You know, so I just have a look, really look at it. Uh, but I would like to come back on the, on the chair's recommendation that we were looking at the sites. Before I make any other comments. Are there any other questions? And in the report, good in uh, the appendix is very useful. Um, give lots of information, lots of detail. I'm interested in section seven on the report uh, because I think section seven on the report is very aspirational, but doesn't give a lot of detail. Doesn't give an all a lot of precision about what we need to do next as to how that will actually go ahead and possibly some dates tied to that. For instance, uh, look at the, the the very last one, which I think is is vital, really, if we're going to make sure that these these kinds of facilities are maintained properly. Is work with communities to help themselves because people who live in those communities have got a responsibility as well as the council to look after those facilities. Uh, and I know that there are certain areas where those communities have actually gang together. Got Ponce Ticket is one case in point, isn't it? Where the Pentagon has been is a fantastic facility. But um, I wonder whether there is anything that the council can do as an organisation to give communities some advice in how they would go ahead about uh, looking after particular assets, looking after particular playgrounds. It just seems to me that 7.6 is in there. And I think if, if we could build on 7.3, which is consultation with the public, and 7.6 working with communities, I think that would go a long way to making sure that the communities themselves in certain areas look after those assets in, in, in a much better way. So I'm not sure whether um, there is anything which you can suggest with regard to linking up with community groups, of which there are several in the borough now. Yeah, yeah we were um, instrumental actually in the, the pawn stickers. Uh, group work you know we, we led them through the process we tended the 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 job etc um and whenever we're asked by other community groups we always um say that there's a group in ponce who are more than happy to to come and meet them to uh, talk them through what they did um and lead them through the process so we, we're always willing to help community groups we, we did a similar thing in on our bowling greens all those were asset transfers so we we are looking at um you know the, the issue and if community groups do the hardest thing is to get the community group in the first place now if that community group can be put together with the help of you know elected members etc we can then advise them but um at the moment the uh, community groups are few and far between when they're looking at you know asset transfers and and, and things like that thank you councillor paula layton yeah, just going on the um thank you chair anyway uh going on the pond stick uh park so i know a lot about that one because my sister's up there <laughs> but uh, it is amazing it's an amazing park but it is enclosed really because it's got a gate to it as well and obviously it's in amongst farmland is it like some of these where they've been vandalized is there any scope for maybe some security of some form like cctv or as you say passing on to the communities but will they be in a position to sort of monitor that, you know, in, in, in a playground? I don't think CCTV is an option in many of the sites unless it's already covered by 
you know, the CCTV, which you already have within the local authority. It's very expensive to put that on a particular playground unless you can use the, the mobile CCTV sites, which, you know, if you've got a vandalised site, which is constantly being hit, maybe we can get the mobile uh, camera there. But I think, you know, permanent CCTV on uh, some of these new schemes, it would increase the cost so much that, um, you know, a lot of the money would be going on cameras rather than the play equipment. As to fencing, it's not a good idea to have fencing because the kids will get in regardless of what fencing you, you put there. Uh, they'll cut holes in it, they'll climb over the top. So it, it's got to be, um, you know, it's got to be accessible. That's the main thing. If you put in a, a site there, it's no good locking it up for, you know, 12 hours a day. It's got to be accessible and used. OK, thank you anyway. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Paula. Councillor Clive Jones. Yes, Chair. It, it's on the uh, financial point that Councillor Smith made about the cost of living, uh, because in the report it does say uh, that this project was increased from 280,000 to 512,000 per annum. And David, I think you said it's, it's for the next five years. In effect, for want of a better word, it's it's ring fence, but um, have the officers taken into account that the biggest disease we've got at the moment, financial disease, is inflation. It's currently at 9.9%. And if you listen to all those uh, who deal with this daily, that is going to go up, um, certainly, um, for, it seems, quite a while. So inflation um is going to er erode that figure is that correct yeah. the the reason why we simply two hundred thousand is the thirty thousand play there seventy thousand a year if we take inflation uh at ten percent say at seven thousand and every year so that gets two hundred and uh that five hundred and five hundred and five thousand so that have been taken to consideration. Okay, Are there any further questions? I got a simple one, Ron. Are there any other types of more robust flooring used in any of the other authorities because of the damage that that's being done to certainly to in in my ward, but uh, it seems to be happening everywhere. Yeah, the, the, there are various types of safety servicing, um, you know, from like wood chip or bark to uh, rubber crumb, which is what you were talking about. Um, very effective, but can be vandalised. We have got um, rubber shred in Thomason Park, which we tried a couple of years ago, which seems to be a bit more durable, where the, the rubber is a recycled rubber and it's a shred rather than the crumb, so it, it's, it interlocks, so um, it's more difficult to pull up. You could still burn it, I suppose. Um, the old rubber tiles, which we used to use, which were very durable, they manufacturers seem to have gone away from the rubber tiles they they, they seem to be more intent on supplying the the rubber wet pour now so we could try the rubber shred um but the best product in the right area is the the rubber crumb but in vandalized areas you know it has suffered so we'll have to look at that but at least if we can get a surface to stay there it's better than having to close parks as has happened in, in my ward yeah that's correct yeah. Thanks, Vera. Uh, uh, no further questions. We we'll move on. To, we have a further question. Clay Jones, Councilor Clay Jones. Sorry, sorry, Chair. Um, it's a program for five years currently. Um, I think that as a scrutiny committee, Chair, that we need to review this plan um, frequently. Um, so I don't know what is in the plan uh exactly for for us to review this on a on a regular basis if i if i can come in there i think i do mention in the report that this doesn't need to be um a five or six year program every 30 years what it what is required is a rolling program so we allocate capital for the next yeah. you know 30 years yeah. uh, and if we do in a couple of sites every year because in another 25 years, we will be back in the same position. 
I, I was here at the start of this in the 90s when we spent uh, 2.1 million. Um, 30 years later, with no investment, all of them need refurbishing. Now, if, if we don't have a rolling program which um, sorts that problem out in another 25 or 30 years, we'll be back in exactly the same position where the 40 or 50 sites will need refurbishment again, whereas we could have a rolling program, a constant rolling program, when the capital outlay um, won't be so um, drastic, I suppose. It'll be gradual rather than a big hit over a few years. So, as it is a rolling programme, um, as a scrutiny committee, is, is the rolling programme going to come back to us on a fairly frequent basis? That's all I'm asking. I would say that this refurbishment programme over five years will have done the, the worst of the sites. I think after the five years, maybe we need to, to revisit it and see which ones then we are going to keep long term and which which ones will be included in the long term rolling programme. Can I suggest that we come back if there's any change in the programme? Councillor, just as a response, Councillor Clive Jones. Yes, I uh, I accept that. I mean, uh, the plan is the plan, but if there's um, tweaks or alterations there um, or issues that are we can't foresee at the moment. I think you should come back here. Yeah, thanks. Councillor Bill Smith. The only comment was Robert Rob made. Rob, we hope to go down to look at all the sites. So after we look at the sites, can we talk about it? Because we might think as members, some are worse than you think on the comments you're making. So perhaps we'll have to work together on that because it's a officer's views and my views. On my in report in my area are totally different on one or two. So I'd rather work together and we can resolve that and, and perhaps improve it. On the communication, that could be top list because people don't want the playing area around the houses. They want it far away, but enough to see the kids play, you know what I mean? So there's a lot of things in that. So can we so after that we might all sit down and think about it? Yeah, totally supportive of that. Uh uh, view. Um, I've already spoken to the chair and uh, would be happy to put the playground inspector and myself, if necessary, to, to accompany you on those site visits so we can point out the things that maybe you can't see. You know, the layman uh, won't be able to notice, but the qualified playground inspector can point these things out to you and why we feel some uh, higher priorities than others. No problem. Are we requesting that we get a, an annual report with regard to the progress made on this scheme. Is that what we are suggesting? Because it's we're in strange financial and economic times now, yeah. and <clears throat> this this could change at any time. Well, is or yeah, you, you, go, yeah, you can put that in because the cost of living, you know, you you reckon inflation would be like 15, 18 percent, you know, like it was years ago. And don't get a lot of money at this. And, uh, you know, with a, is with that the what we're going to ask for? The same, I made a triple pension, actually. It could be loaded. <laughs> yeah, we, we're all aware of the current difficulties. Is that what we're going we to ask? That, that they, they, they introduce that as well? That we get an annual report with regard to the programme? Yeah, you're the chair. Yeah. yeah. Then can we add just add that to the report, then, please, the recommendations? Yeah. There's a review back to this committee annually. Any comments? Mr. Philip Starr? Yeah, it's important. The idea of having a, uh, a, a review every year could well just, could be the, uh, the, the updated of the summary which you provided in Appendix 1, which is very useful. And if that can be updated every year, then we can see progress made against uh, against other aspects of the report as well. So I fully support that, Chair. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Philip. Clive Jones. Chair, um, all I want to say is that if it's at all possible, I know we're in uh, difficult times and uh, it might get even more difficult in the next uh, few months, but if there's any way that we can increase 
the number of the worst ones being refurbished per year, i.e. increase it to five or more, I think we'd all really welcome that. Councillor Malcolm Colbran. Thank you, Chair. Uh, yeah, I'm fully in favour of the site visits to the playgrounds, but I'm not sure that it's practical for us to visit all 50. I think we need to be more selective on the ones we're doing. A cross section of the ones that have been done, the ones that need doing urgently, and perhaps one or two in better condition. Um, I don't see how we can get around all 50. It would appear as though there are going to be two tranches. One uh, marathon effort by at least Bill and myself, and another one then where we'll be choosing two or three refurbished playgrounds that have got uh, as wide a variety of equipment in them as possible, including DDA, and a couple of the sites that are the worst of what's left, if that's. So there'll be two tranches, but we'll, we'll come back and meet together and we'll work that out between us. OK, that sounds uh, sounds like a plan, Chair. Um, happy to show people the uh, site that's been refurbished in Bedlinog. If anybody would like to come along, I'm happy to invite you to come and see that. Thanks, Chair. Yeah, just to point the obvious, really, that obviously Rob will need to commission the work to these sites as soon as possible within this financial year. So we just get the, the site visits conducted and report back and we can get that underway then. Yeah, unfortunately, we are, we were hoping to do it before this meeting, but it, things just went a bit awry. So, but we will get it done as quickly as possible. We will close that item, and just like to thank the, all the officers. I've got uh, Paul and Christian for three very good reports, um, and for the top team for. In attendance today, and thank you very much all. You can leave if you so wish. Or you're happy. To, no, you can't stay for us anyway. That moves us on to um, item eight, report recommendations. Um, we'll open this up to the floor first. Any recommendation, uh, report on the recommendations? Yep. Uh, so that's all three of them. That my understanding of it is we don't need to vote and we've got, as we've gone through them, we've just followed we've the recommendations. Like yeah. I think there were three good, very good reports. There's a lot of good questions, but I don't think they, they, there's a lot left to interrogate because the reports were quite thorough. Um, and I think we we did what we could in being a critical friend to each of the reports. Um, any other comment with any anybody else? Um, on the playgrounds one, to get round all these 50 odd is a really mammoth task. Um, and by the sound of it, Chair, you've got a plan to to deal with that because I don't think you 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 take weeks and weeks to get r round all 50 odd um, to to come back here. But I think the plan I I'm fairly certain you've got. Uh, means that you'll have a very good flavour of the ones that have been done and done well and the ones that are in an awful state. Yeah, and hopefully we'll, we'll be able to have a smaller tour to, I don't know, four or five sites to for anyone that wants to uh, attend those as well. That's it. That's the first tranche, as you said. Yeah. Uh, Councillor Malcolm Colbran. Yeah, thanks, Chair. Yeah, I thought all three reports were excellent. The recommendations were good. And 
I don't think there was any disagreement from anybody on the committee with the recommendations. So, you know, well done to the officers for bringing those reports forward and the excellent recommendations. So, so we can move on from there, get these things in progress as soon as we can now. Uh, Mr. Philip Starr. I think it links in very much with what Malcolm said. And as soon as we can now, I think part of what, what we what we were left with wasn't a, sp a, a specific date. Like the system of trade waste, that are leaving that until March is far, far too too long. That needs to be brought forward as quickly as possible. And with the van permits, that can be done almost straight away. Yeah, but what, 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 what I, okay, well, I, did, I should have mentioned, it, it was it, it was implied that there would be a, a paper communication to households with regard to that new system, rather than relying on social media. How, how will the average householder be told then that they can use an MPV or they can use a, 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 a minibus? Will that come through a leaflet, like many of the other changes that have been done to recycling have, have been through, or will it come through uh, the newspaper, or will it come through social media? The only thing I can suggest to that is that it'll go back to um, the director and ask what their intentions are. Um, we suggested various things in a meeting this morning um, that would be done, but I will get that answer and I'll bring it back to the committee. Well, you hope not no, not, not just. Do people media. you follow social media? Well, they all put their bins out on the wrong day last week, didn't they? Yeah. That's a case in point. I don't follow social media. Oh, so but it's okay. a, so Bill, is it going to have to be a leaflet into the house, you know, telling you exactly what the new system is? Pin it up on the board in the kitchen. I think you've got, you've got to cover all the bases. Yeah. Well, what well, they said, that could have gone to the council. Yeah. It'll go to the council on seats or whatever the date is, they said, right? Then five days after the policy, then you take it, take it out. Right. right. So they can't go date until it's confirmed everything else, and then they take it out. More likely they do, like a beer, like a, a paper drop yeah. through doors like they normally do. No. Great to have it in before Christmas, wouldn't it? Because well, um, rubbish that, before Christmas. That's what we asked, and there was way. Yeah. When? Like, why wait too late? But if you can get it up, up, up around that festive area, you can just dump the stuff then. Well, after November the 8th, it's great to have yeah. the next council, anyway, wherever it is. Can we come back through the chair, please? Sorry. Yeah, but I agree with Malcolm's idea. If the contact magazine is being put out at the right time, it'd be worth putting it there, definitely. Um, Councillor Paula Leighton, please. Hi, thank you, Chair. Now, I just want to say I thought the, the three reports are really good. Um, down to when you're saying about going and visiting the sites, um, I think it'd be good for us to see the new ones, definitely. I would like to see the new ones and how they've done with them. And I think what Rob was touching on around the experts and they see things that we probably don't is another good point. So maybe, you know, if you, if you are going to see some of them, the ones that need doing or the ones that got lined up to be done, is um, maybe take his views on board as well as to where, you know, he thinks we need to be, like. And I think also you the questioning around the three um, recommendations was really good as well by everyone. So I think you've exhausted what you could have done anyway. As you said, the reports were good, so... Yeah, thank you, Chair. Yeah, thank you for that, Councillor Layton. Um, any final comments? Go on to agenda item nine then. Um, feedback on scrutiny activities, any outstanding actions? The only one that I want to bring up is that the we will be going on the visits that we said we will unfortunately we couldn't get them done before the meeting so i don't believe there are any other outstanding actions um i have no other business no other deemed urgent councillor clive jones yes um i don't, don't make any excuses re for bringing this up here um because we're all here, I think, 
except uh, Councillor Davis. The December meeting of the school committee is the is on the 19th of December, which is four days before Christmas Eve. Can I suggest, Chair, that we have a look at that? Um, if you want a reasonable attendance, and could we pos if that's the case, could we possibly look at it um, taking place the week before? A few days before Christmas, I think experience tells us that people have got other things to do, including co-opted members and council members. Oh, okay. we'll, we'll have a discussion about it and get back to members with as much yeah, notice as possible. Take my book first. OK, cheers, thanks. Your attendance and your input, much appreciated. I declare the meeting closed. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Bye.